friends, here it is, the Monday morning live stream here at the Thrive Like a Viking headquarters. And <clears throat> let's see, it feels like we just did this yesterday, didn't it? Yes, but uh, we are going to talk about some good stuff today because I got tons of questions from people about this uh, movie, you know, um, the, the movie that was on the cover, uh, what is it, uh, Leave It All Behind. It's a recent Netflix movie, and um, uh, well, many of you have watched it maybe. Some of you haven't. Even if you haven't, it doesn't matter because, of course, we're going to go way above and beyond uh, in our discussion. We're going to go much deeper than these people are, uh, are going. And so we will uh, touch on the very nature of reality and how reality is decoded. Okay? So uh, let's see who's here. We'll get us in a little meditation, and then we will um, discuss some stuff. And uh, Jerry says, I gave that film an F for all the unnecessary F-bombs. I always move forward with the idea that someday the lights won't be on, but we will never know what that looks like until it happens. Yes, the film actually was kind of garbage. I, I mean, it was, it's not like really a good film. I was watching it because a, a, at least a dozen people contacted me. Nate, you gotta watch this film and let me know what you think. What, what, what are your thoughts on it? I mean, this pr they're telling us, they're telling us what, what's gonna happen and all of this, so uh, it's okay. Um, so I had to watch it. Uh, that's basically R&D for me. That's like research and development, you know? Um, so now we can discuss it, but we're going to use it as a, as a um, cue or as a prompt to go uh, much deeper, of course. So here we are. Let's see who is here. Val, good morning, my friend. Says good morning from Chile, northern Arizona. Happy to be here with you all. Yes. With y'all. Are, are you in the, uh, is Arizona, do they say y'all? Do they say y'all or is that only like in the south? Uh, Pam, hello, says, I so look for Monday. Be inspired and to listen. I am in my right place. Hello, all the lovely listeners. Much love, peace, and blessings. Gratitude. Yes, my friend, gratitude. Absolutely. There are few feelings better than gratitude. So, um, Jerry uh, says, uh, oh, yeah, what film? Brian, hello, my friend, says good morning or evening, Nate and Tribe. Much peace and blessings, my friends. Yes, same to you. Ursula, good morning, my friend, says good morning, everyone. The day started out snowing and heavy overcast. Now the sun is peeking through and shining down on my de desk as I speak or as I type. Nice, that's a wonderful thing. Yes, I didn't see any snow this morning. Uh, Jerry says uh, the one in the title for, t oh, yeah, leave the world behind. Okay. Val says she didn't watch it, but you don't have Netflix. That's perfectly fine, guys. Uh, if you even if, if you're like me, you don't even have a TV, so you have to go somewhere else to watch it, and you don't have any subscriptions to anything, you know. But I know plenty of people that have got you know ten different subscriptions to all all the stuff, so that they never miss any of the the you know, the, and they've watched every series of everything that there is out. And I just oh boy, oh boy, no. Um, so, Ms. T, good to see you here, my friend. Send in that high vibrational energy. Peace and blessings for a wonderful day and week ahead from cool northeastern Texas. Uh, haven't seen the programming. Okay, you haven't seen the movie. Not a problem. Uh, I will just give it a brief premise after the meditation, and then we will use that to go deeper, of course. And uh, hello, Jenny Grubb. Good to see you. Burger time, my friend. Good to see you. He said, I had to watch it in two parts. The anxiety inspired was incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it definitely was trying very hard to inspire anxiety. Definitely. Because when the brain is in an anxious state like that, it can be very receptive to programming. It can be very receptive because the conscious mind is uh, 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 distracted with the anxiety and, and all the, the thoughts and everything. Uh, so... The uh, Jody K, good to see you, my friend. And uh, Burger Time says, those lights are blowing out the light and making you fuzzy looking. Ooh, these lights behind me? Maybe actually it is, uh, it's because this iPad actually doesn't have a very good camera. Does that help at all? It actually doesn't have a very good camera. Yeah, maybe that light is. Um, so yeah, let me know if how I can make it, um, how I can make it. 
How about that? Hmm. Uh, much better. Okay. So, uh, yes, Jody K says, I'm only halfway through the movie. I wasn't going to watch it, but then decided to try to watch it last minute because of your live stream. Yes. Well, thank you for doing the research involved. Um, but even if you don't, we will still talk about it. And then you can watch it afterwards, uh, which might also be uh, good. Lisa T, Central Indiana, light snow and sun. Beautiful. Last night, our neighborhood did luminary, luminarius. What is that? Nice event for community and more beauty. Yes, I'm not sure what that is. Um, hello, Matias. Good to see you here, my friend. Trish, good to see you here. Yes, clearer image. Lens cleaning worked. Okay, yes, good. Hello, Graham from Ireland. Hi, Nate. People's new 4K Ultra TVs are really MK Ultra TVs. Yes. Uh, four in numerals is M. They love to tell you to your face. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely MK Ultra. Hmm? Mind control. Yes, mind control ultra. So, guys, let us uh, get into the meditative state of mind here for a little bit so that we can uh, get our base, get our baseline. This is what is important, all right? Um, and then we will move deeper into the other topics. So, <clears throat> okay, my friends, it is meditation time. Whatever you are doing, it can wait. Right now, you simply sit in a comfortable position, the back spine straight, and you relax the body as we take a few deep conscious breaths together, breathing fully in as deeply as you can. Hold. Let it go. Again, breathing fully in. Hold. Let it go. Last one. Fill the lungs. Hold. Hold. And let it go. Now allow the body to breathe naturally and normally. Notice how the perfect intelligence of the body knows exactly how to sustain. Notice how you do not have to make any effort to breathe in any particular way. The body knows exactly how to sustain the organism. Just allow it to happen. Allow the body to breathe for you. Whatever is happening in this moment, give it a deep allowing. Allow this moment to be in whatever form it is taking. It doesn't matter the form the moment is taking. If there are noises around you, it's okay. Just allow it. If the dog is barking, doesn't matter. Just allow it. If the body is slightly aching, doesn't matter. Just allow it to happen. Just for the period of this meditation. Whatever your senses are experiencing, Give it a deep yes. As you breathe naturally and normally, bring your attention to the subtle sensation of air as it flows past your nose and into the body sustaining life and back out of the body carrying waste this never-ending exchange between you and the atmosphere
There's no need to think of anything in particular. Just allow. If thoughts come into the mind, don't try to block them out. Just allow and observe and watch it. And then let it go. And bring your full attention only to the breathing, the sensation of air as it flows in and out of the body. Some of you will find the mind is very active, talking to you, chattering at you, like a noisy squirrel or chipmunk in the tree, making noise. This is the state of the mind for a lot of people. It's okay. Just observe. Just observe, come back to the breath, feel the lungs as they expand, contract, feel the blood as it absorbs the oxygen and releases the carbon dioxide. Feel the gravity holding you tightly to the earth. You're simultaneously aware of all of these things. Every aspect of the breath. you will find after consistent practice that you are able to focus your mind is becoming more and more still quiet calm serene full of equanimity and poise when this happens to the mind Naturally, your true nature begins to shine through. You will feel a sense of joy, a sense of profound contentment, satisfaction. A sense of unity with the atmosphere with the earth, with all things, deeply connected. Observe, allow. Deeply connected.
some of you will find you can reside longer and longer in your true nature. This is the highest energy. It is healing for the body and mind, for the individual and the collective. Observe, allow, If thoughts, images arise, just observe, allow them to pass out of the mind. Even if an ad or a commercial pops up, use it as part of the meditation. Just observe. Observe the corresponding sensations within you. Maybe you feel frustrated. The ad has interrupted your meditation. Just observe. Don't ride the wave of the emotion. It is not you. Very good. Together, let us take a few deep conscious breaths to bring ourselves out of the meditation. Breathing fully in. Hold. And let it go. Again, breathing deeply as you can. Hold. Let it go. Last one. Fill the lungs. Hold. Hold. And let it go. As you come out of the meditation, notice how your true nature is always there. It just appears to become clouded by the happenings of the world, what the senses perceive in this world. When you open the eyes, it appears like there is a world external. And we can get pulled into the external world. When we open the eyes, we see things and it engages our intention, our attention. We hear things, we feel things. It pulls our attention. And it seems that we leave our true nature and go somewhere else. But this is never the case. Always. Your true nature is there a radiant light, a deep, knowing peace. Knowing what? Knowing that everything is perfect. Everything is all right. <clears throat> okay, guys. So if we can do that kind of meditation, the more we practice it, the quicker we can drop into it because the mind and body are easy to train. It just takes consistency. You do this meditation five minutes, no problem. You drop in, you feel all the sensations. You allow your true nature to shine through. You feel how good it feels the clarity of mind 
of being pure in mind and heart and body because of what we put into our body. We are ever watchful. When you become the observer, nothing escapes your watchful gaze. <clears throat> okay, guys. So, hmm. Trish says, yesterday during the book club, you mentioned a recommended book having to do with illness, pain, and emotions. I tried watching back, but still I missed it. Can you please tell me the name of it? Uh, illness, pain, during the book club. Hmm. Um, I, think, I think I'm actually talking about the power of now. It's going to get into that. Eckhart talks about it. We're going to get into it. I think it's this one. Um, it, it is, where he talks about the pain body. So we will get into that much deeper because, uh, well, e each spiritual teacher has their own language, their own, their own way of presenting the truth that they have realized. It's the same truth, but it's encoded in different ways by different people in different times and different cultures and to different audiences because each person requires different medicine. And so Eckhart's way of conveying the truth is uh, he uses, well, as we will see, he, he uses uh, the, the term the pain body. And so he actually makes uh, a, a, the mental emotional energy field into, he personifies it like humans do to many things. He personifies it intentionally. He's not, he doesn't actually think it's a pain body. There's not an actual gremlin there, but he's personifying it so that we can conceptualize it and work through it and let it go. So you will see all of this with the book. It's fantastic. So Aaron Johnson says that one was powerful. I am connected with you all. Yes, I am getting very good at watching my thoughts drift away and focusing on breath. Good, good. Yes. And also notice as you become more and more aware of what is going on in the energy field around you, uh, then you will see that time and space are also illusions. Uh, and so even though all of us, Matthias is in the Netherlands, Pam is in South Africa, there's people all over the place, California, uh, Portugal, you know, Belgium, uh, yet it, it's different times there and everything, but yet we're all right here together. And when we connect like this, you can feel the energy. You can feel it's all here and now. Yes, it's amazing. It's fantastic. Uh, Trish says, no, it was a different book. Oh, I'm going to have to think about that because I don't know what. I don't know what. Jamie, good to see you here. Glad you could make it, my friend. Trish says, I'll rewatch yesterday's video again. Yes, sorry. I don't know exactly um, what it was. <clears throat> so, uh, guys, what do you know about predictive programming. What do you think that it is? This topic is important uh, because it is happening all around us. And so when, so long as it remains unconscious, meaning unaware of it, uh, then you, then it has power. Only when you're unaware, when it's locked within your subconscious, meaning below your conscious thresh threshold, okay? The subconscious isn't some magic thing. It's just it's it's the energy field that is below your conscious threat what conscious threshold and so it's um uh they say and i can confirm with my own firsthand experience that the conscious mind is only five percent of our experience of what dictates the course of our life the other 95 percent is the subconscious mind meaning below your awareness it's not a magical thing that is Freudian or, 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 or young, you know, it's not, it's just the thing that controls all the elements of your life. Like right now, are you digesting your food consciously? No, of course not. That would be a mess. That would be a total mess. If you had to consciously digest your food and assimilate all the nutrients, break down the molecules and then reassemble them into human flesh. Can you even when you say it like that, 
it's just jaw dropping the the technology involved in that the the uh, the uh you know to take a bite of a banana to break it down the molecules and then rearrange the atoms into another substance which then is human flesh rearrange it into a liver rearrange it into blood or to whatever is required i mean it just our, our 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 greatest technology cannot even remotely come close to this uh so all of this is happening we could say by the subconscious mind the subconscious mind is knows when to beat the heart how to digest the food how to assimilate the oxygen molecules that are coming in okay all of it has to be orchestrated and, and this this is uh the subconscious all right and so it also the subconscious also is what gives us our gut feelings and this is good because the subconscious is always watching. The subconscious never slumbers. Even when you, conscious mind, are asleep, the subconscious is still awake. It, it never slumbers. And so this is why uh, you never should fall asleep with the television on. Uh, because it uh, goes directly. When the conscious mind is, is uh, asleep, you know, has to go into reprieve. Uh, then the subconscious can ab still absorb things because we had to evolutionarily, of course. We had to because um, if there was something, uh, you know, happening, a, a neighboring tribe co coming to war or a, a tiger or something, we had to, boom, it'll wake you up, okay? The subconscious is always listening. Even when you think that it's not, um, it is there and it is writing down everything. It's writing down everything. So even if you are talking with somebody, something is going on here in the background, uh, uh, over here, the subconscious is absorbing it all, all right? And so it keeps it on a permanent record. It, it keeps it on a permanent record. And so this is why, uh, well, okay, it keeps it on a permanent record and then it gives you uh, your gut feelings, your your sensations that, mm, yeah, oh, I don't think that that's good or, oh yes, I, I this is good because the subconscious has a, a vast database to draw from. It has a, a vast database to draw from because it's always listening. So especially if you've had a lot of diversity of experiences in your life, then you have a much wider diversity of data points to draw from with the subconscious mind. And so most of us uh, our conscious mind, our thinking mind, the mind that is talking, the mind that can do math problems, the mind that, that uses language, this is only 5% of our, of our experience. And uh, the, um, man, sorry, I gotta shut off these notifications. Uh, okay, so we have to understand the subconscious mind. Okay, so let that sink in for a second. I want to see what you guys are talking about. Jessica, yes. Jessica Benjamin, hi from Central Valley, California. Just found you a week ago. Nice. Yes, I used to have a girlfriend in Modesto. Um, is that Central Valley enough? Uh, we stayed there for some time, actually, when I was living in a van. I was living in a van. Back when I was doing it, it was before it was cool, though. It was when people, when living in a van down by the river wasn't cool. Um, now it's like, if you're lucky enough, you can afford to buy a van and live van life down by the river. Now there's hashtag van life and stuff, but everyone was kind of looking down on it when I was doing it, but whatever. It was still awesome. So, um, yes, yes, okay. Can these energies, a muddy pause says, uh, can these energies cause physical tremors? Uh, they can, absolutely. It can cause um, anything. But still, even the tremor, you just watch it. You watch it as it arises. You watch it as it passes. That's how you get to the source of it. That's how you understand it. And that's how you disassociate from it. And uh, because the tremors, the sensations, anything the five senses are telling you is actually the little me, is actually the small self, not the infinite self. Uh, so the, uh, okay. The guys are wel welcoming them, Jessica. Good, good. See, we got real good people here. I mean, it's just incredible. Um, we're very fortunate. So, um, uh, 
Let's see. Blue Wolf says, Trish, Supercharged Self-Healing by RJ Spina is an amazing read on self-healing. Nice, nice. Uh, way back in the day, also, The Four Agreements, the Toltec, definitely worth a read. Uh, Matea says, sometimes I get headache when I meditate or place my awareness on my thoughts or try to think clearly. Any thoughts? Why? Uh, headaches can be, you know, uh, more mineral and, and uh, uh, electrolyte caused, based. Uh, also, maybe your eyes are not getting enough uh, exercise. You don't go, f I'm not saying you in particular, but this can happen. Uh, you don't go out and look far enough away. We need to practice looking far off into the horizon, focusing our eyes as far as possible. This is important, especially if we spend a lot of time in this range, you know, screens and talking to people up front. We need to focus long distances to keep the eyes, the muscles in the eyes strong. Um, but also just watch it. I know that's easier said than done, but you just allow. The, the meditation is an allowing process to deeply, yes, whatever it is, just allow it for the moment, for the moment. But we use that as feedback. Uh, a headache, any kind of pain, physical pain, emotional pain, these are feedback mechanisms. So we don't deny them. We observe them and we get to the source of them without becoming drawn into them. Um, Burger Time says, really seems like a meme mantra repeated enough and the general public starts picking up on it just like a brand name. Yes, okay, so we're going to talk here in just a moment about the, um, uh, and then Creative Soil says, they tell you before they do it. Yes, 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 we will talk about why. Uh, why that has to be that way. Jessica Benjamin says, thanks to all. Source definitely led me to Nate as I garden and have been looking for a cleanse. Going to start the master cleanse soon. So excited. Nice, nice. Make sure you're prepared mentally. Watch every video I made on it and then prepare. A lot of us have done the cleanse uh, here. So uh, Matias says, I can't understand how people can sleep with the television on. I am way too sensitive to noise. Oh, man. Once you stop watching the television for a while and then, I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. When I go to the houses where people have the television on, it's like a, a, an assault. All, all the different sounds and the commercials and everything is so yelling at you and, hey, come down to Grody Automotive and buy four tires and blah, blah. You know, all kinds of stuff that, that is, uh, it just feels like an assault. And, and people are trying to talk to me, you know, like uh, trying to carry on a conversation. And I'm like, like almost in a fight or flight, like, you know, ready to go. Like, uh, because it feels so aggressive and it's just the television. And they're like, what? They didn't even notice the television was on. And we're trying to have dinner or something and the television is still on. All these commercials, everything going right into their subconscious mind. I'm thinking, man, well, okay, well, this is why you're in crushing debt and uh, your life, <laughs> well, okay. But anyways, uh, so <clears throat> Jody K, I was just gonna ask if the van was down by the river. Yeah, it was down by lots, lots of rivers, especially when I was selling Christmas trees in New York City out of the uh, van. We were down by the river. So, uh, okay, guys, <clears throat> now, uh, the oh were you talking about when you were doing the the breathing exercises matthias or the meditation yeah so uh okay now we were talking about the subconscious mind so now that we understand how the subconscious mind is very important in dictating our life and what is happening in our life uh, and we always talk about it here so it, it's you should have a, a good grasp by now uh, watch the, the series I made a few years ago on this channel called nature, the nature of reality. They're just brief little videos where I was just saying my thoughts, voicing over all of it, but they're only like three or five minutes. Um, and, so, but they really, it's the essence there. Uh, so subconscious mind, predictive programming. What does predictive programming mean to you guys? Uh, I think Creative Soil said they tell you what they're going to do before they do it. Now, uh, to understand what it really is and why it is necessary and why it's happening all around us, then we have to understand the nature of reality. We have to understand that essentially 
we live in a field of infinite potential energy, infinite potentiality, that even science now is coming to the conclusions that the rishis or the sages, the, the Buddhas of the past, the ancients, they came to this by a totally different way, an experiential, knowing, feeling, connected way. But science now knows that things are not solid. We think that this is solid, but it is, of course, not. It is made up of atoms, uh, and which are then made up of what? When you get into quantum mechanics, you see, if you study quantum physics, you see that even this is, uh, even the atom is not solid. And that even the atom is essentially popping in and out of existence uh, at such a, a rapid pace that uh, it appears to our senses to be solid, right? So, I mean, I'm just stating what, what is commonly known even now in science. Uh, look up the double slit experiment. Yes, the double slit experiment where uh, it, it, and it baffles most of, of regular science, but it's more quantum mechanics, how uh, things exist as wave forms, wave field energies until there is an observer and then it collapses into the reality that we experience. So you, if you haven't, if you don't already understand the double slit experiment and what that shows, then uh, look that up a bit. But uh, it's all pointing to the fact that we live in a field of waveform information. There's no solidity to anything that is around us. Our senses, uh, because of the way that they perceive, they, uh, we believe, we are under the perception that things are solid and that there is an external world that is different from an internal world in some way. When we close our eyes, we think that we're in the internal world. But then when we open our eyes, we, we believe that we're viewing an external world. Okay. But there's actually, that's actually also an illusion. So it could be likened to a, to Wi-Fi. Think of it, think of it this way. All around you right now is Wi-Fi. Yes. Waveform information, all of the internet, everything that it contains is around you somewhere in waveform information, unable to be accessed until there is a decoding device that can access the waveform information and decode it into uh, something accessible. And that decoding device is the computer or is your phone or whatever it is. The Wi-Fi is still all around us. We can't see it. We can't feel it. We say, no, there's no Wi-Fi because I don't see it or feel it or taste it or, or, or I can't experience it because you don't have the decoding device to access it. But once you have the decoding device, then all of a sudden, boom, the whole, the vastness of the internet becomes available to you. Okay, but it all has to do, the only reason you can access that waveform energy is because you have the decoding device. Now, this organism, your experience, is essentially, in many ways, the, the cosmic Wi-Fi decoding device. And so we, uh, we are decoding the waveform energy that is around us into what we expect to see. And this is what the double slit can, can show along with many, many others. I, I'm just saying that because it's easier to research. Um, and so, uh, let's see here. I guess a couple of you guys are saying some things. Uh, Blue Wolf says, in the double slit experiment, once observed, the light pattern changes from the point of origin. It goes back in time and changes. Okay, okay, yes, yes. Uh, Matia says, there is... Also, the strategy when alternative information that is called false is later confirmed by the authorities as true so they can tell a lie again. Yes, yes. Okay, so we are going into uh, how this pertains to predictive programming and why it is happening and how to be aware of it and why it's so important. Because um, we live in a field, an ocean of waveform information until it is decoded by the uh, cosmic computer, which is our mind, our experience, our exper experience. So how it is decoded is 
subject to many things, and that is perception. That is perception. Remember, human behavior is dictated not by the truth. It is dictated by the perception of the truth. Human behavior is not dictated by the truth. It is dictated by the perception of the truth. Now, what do I mean by that? For example, um, there is a tribe in the Pacific Islands that believes that if they, if they steal food from one another, then a giant iridescent sea turtle will strike them down. That's what they believe. And so therefore, nobody is stealing food from one another because the giant sea turtle will strike them down. Now, the, what is dictating their behavior is the perception of the truth, not the truth. The truth is that there is no giant iridescent sea turtle that will strike them down. But that doesn't matter because that's not what they perceive to be true. They perceive to be true the giant iridescent sea turtle. And so that dictates their behavior. So we have to keep that in mind when we're thinking about what controls human activity, human behavior. It's not the truth. It's perception of the truth. So, <clears throat> predictive programming, the reason that they have to show us, the reason that they have to show us these things is because at, at, at the highest levels, guys, the people that are the, the, um, the, the beings, the people, the creatures in many ways that are uh, uh, doing sort of directing, guiding uh, uh, aspects of humanity. You can go back to some of my videos I made several years ago where I'm talking about this kind of thing. Uh, you know, the club, you know, the council of 12, all, all of these kind of things. Uh, we know about all of this. You know, uh, the, it goes by many names, Illuminati, the club of Rome, the council on foreign relations, uh, the, the uh, um, council of 12, the Lemurian council, all of these we've researched, we're aware of what all of this is. Okay. Uh, but it's even higher than that. Right, so, so people really uh, that have the most sort of power, you would never be able to pick them out of a, of a lineup. They're not politicians. They're not, they're not uh, uh, Jeff Bezos. They're not Elon Musk. These are all like figureheads. The people really pulling levers in, in human society at this time uh, are completely unknown to you and me. I mean, you would never be able to pick them out of a lineup, and this is with, for a reason, of course. Um, now, they are almost effectively in, uh, indistinguishable from like wizards in, in, what they, in what can happen with, with this reality because we are decoding waveform information. So how do you create the reality that you want to create? You get as many decoding devices to decode it in this way as possible. And the more decoding devices, that is to say human minds, that can decode this in a collective sort of way, it will happen. I know that that sounds totally outlandish to some people, totally far off, and it did to me many years ago as well, until over all the years and the traveling and the reading and the research, and I understand that this is how reality is created. It is fluid. Reality is fluid. It is not solid. And it, ha it has entirely to do with the perception. And so if we can put out movies like this one that show certain things, that show, uh, I mean, these people know exactly, these, these behavioral engineers, behavioral magicians in many ways. If we can put out things that can implant the image in the mind of enough people, then we are going to bring about that as a reality. This is why they have to show us these things. Contagion. Yes, the movie Contagion, along with dozens and dozens and do dozens of other movies. The Contagion before uh, uh, the, before the um, pandemic. You know, they have to do that because they have to implant into the psyche of enough people in order for it to become a reality. Because if, if they can't, if it's not decoded by enough people, uh, decoding devices, it's not going to happen. Yes, this is how powerful media is. This is why it is the absolute monster in your house. Once you start to grasp this and the power 
of your mind, the immense world-changing power of your mind, then you begin to see how sacred it is and how powerful it is and why it needs to be guarded properly at any cost. Yes. And so the um, predictive programming is, is uh, say, okay, we're going to show them this and, and we're going to do it in such a way that it's going to implant in their mind this uh, reality that we want to bring into existence. And so, boom, unknowing to most people, because most people are not observing their mind. They're totally unaware that there, is, that there even is a them that is separate from the mind, a self that is separate from the mind. Uh, so they're not like observing the mind. They're not doing the meditations and stuff. So it's just happening. It's just happening. And they're decoding it in this way. And so that is why it is important that we become aware of it so that we can say, okay, we're aware of this, but I'm not going to give that any resting place. That's not the reality I'm going to decode. I'm not going to contribute to decoding that kind of reality to, to uh, like in the movies and, and the, the, uh, you know, the Armageddon and the world, uh, you know, economic forum and all of that kind of stuff. So um, we're just going to say, no, actually, I'm going to decode a different reality. I'm going to decode one that is full of life, that is full of high vibration and love and positivity. And I'm going to decode one that is full of togetherness and communion with the land. Yes, we're going to get back to the land. We're going to have communion with the land and the animals. We're going to raise the animals in the right way. And we're going to sustain ourselves and our life. And this is the reality that I'm decoding. Uh, so it's good to be aware of things like in that movie. It's good to be aware of, um, of uh, you know, contagion. I, I mean, of the politics and all of that. Kind of stuff. It's good to be aware to a certain degree. But here's what most people don't realize, especially people that are deeply invested in politics and, and deeply identified with the, the current state of the world and all of that. They don't even realize that they are helping bring it about. Most people will just say, er, no, no, that's false, not true. Because this is, how the sub, this is how reality works. This is how the subconscious mind brings about your reality. You're already using this in your life. Most people are just not aware of it. But as you get deeper and deeper and more subtle and more subtly aware, you will see in your life that this power is already how you're creating your life. And so it does. And, and then you will say, oh, whoa, huh. it does. This is how it works. So now I'm going to uh, not focus on the crazy politics and the crazy state of the world and all of that, because I'm actually helping bring that about. The more that I think about this world of, of the economic forum or, or that you're going to own nothing and be happy, we're going to eat bugs and all that. Oh, no. The more you worry about that, the more you're helping bringing it about. So we must not decode this type of reality. We must decode a different reality. And how do we do that? We visioneer it. It's easy once we calm the mind. It's easy once we find the, the unlimited source of strength within you. It's easy then. So, Kathy Tittle says, I do not consent. That's right. That's right. And now we say that, we say, I do not consent. Also, we must actually not help bring it about by letting it go, by letting it go. We don't live in fear of any kind whatsoever because there's nothing to fear. You are the source of all creation. What <laughs> you've ultimately, you've never been born. There is no death. We are already in eternity. This is already the Garden of Eden around you right now. And so uh, what could that possibly, what could anything in this little fleeting physical realm possibly do to the ultimate me? I am immortal. What, what could it, so there's no fear of any kind. And so we don't live in fear. We don't speak fear to other people. We talk about it when it's necessary, like now, like in a teaching situation or when we're going to convey truths or, you know, uh, but, but we don't just dwell on, on the state of the world or what the negative things that are happening or the Illuminati and all that. We don't dwell on that because that is actually helping them. And that's not what we're going to do because that's not the reality I'm decoding. 
Yes, Lisa of Light says, hence mindfulness. Definitely, we become aware. We become aware. And there comes a point, see, at first it's like effort. You have to make an effort to like meditate and like be aware of the mind. And then it's like, it can feel like struggle, but then, okay, oh, and then you're done meditating. You go about your life and the mind is just blah, 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 you know, running wild and stuff. But there comes a point after enough practice, and I can't say exactly when it will be for each person, um, but there comes a point when something switches, something flips, and all of a sudden, the seat of your existence, the, the you, the, the seat of your life, the you that you take yourself to be, it switches. It just, it's like your whole life you were viewing from over here, all of a sudden you kind of, now you're over here and nowhere at the same time. And so everything, the awareness sustains itself. It's like a nuclear fusion or it's like, it's like self-sustaining the awareness of things. So once enough practice comes in, then you're aware of everything. You're aware of every thought as it comes up and you're aware of every sensation. You're aware of every emotion. Nothing escapes your watchful gaze. And so you can just choose to watch it or you can choose to play with it. You can choose to feel the emotion. You can choose to be in it. You can choose to, to feel this way. But it's your choice at that point instead of just unconsciously being pulled into all of it. Yes, or you can just choose to watch it drift away like a cloud drifting in the sky. Yes, Val says, be aware, but be prepared. Oh, absolutely. Now, all of that being said, we don't bury our, hand, our head in the sand. You know, we have food, water, protection, and skills, and most importantly, health. We have all of these things because we are, this is like a, a, this is like a different kind of spirituality. You know, we're aware of all of these things and the nature of reality, but also we're aware of the way that this realm functions. And so we are fully prepared for whatever might come. Fully prepared and willing and able to accept uh, and, and to act. So yes, it doesn't mean that we just, oh no, and then we just bury, or we pre pretend, we're not pretending like nothing is, is coming or nothing is happening. Uh, but we are saying this is a, a mental, emotional energy field, something completely different. So, um, yeah, we are still prepared. Absolutely. But do we dwell on it? Do we talk about prepping and do we, do, do we, uh, are we constantly thinking about fear? Like what's right around the next corner? What disasters are right about to come? No, because you are helping it to come about. I know most people don't like hear that message because it puts the responsibility right on their shoulders and says, okay, well stop bringing it about, stop contributing, stop contributing to it energetically speaking. So Brian says, I now place my cell phone in a, in another room when I'm not using it. Uh, yes, yes, this is good. Also guys, you should look into a Faraday bag. I put my cell phone in a Faraday bag, uh, every, every night. So, um, I put it in the Faraday bag and it's, certain times, you know, if I need to, but it completely blocks all radio frequency transmissions, the Faraday bag. Maybe I'll put a link in the description uh, when I, when I, uh, of the one that I have, but several years ago, I got them for all my loved ones. You know, I was, they were like, what? And giving out these bags. I'm like, no, believe me, really, you want to use this. You really want to use this because guys, uh, now we have to be aware of this stuff as well. We are a, an electromagnetic organism in many ways, this organism decodes, the decoding device is electromagnetic in, in a way, is electro. Uh, and so we are, uh, I mean, think there's a positive and negative charge to every cell, every ion, every uh, uh, everything in the body. It's all has to do with charge. So uh, this organism never evolved to have all of this electrical interference, all of this stuff that is happening the Wi-Fi that is happening. I keep my Wi-Fi on a timer. It goes off at uh, 11, comes on at 7 in the morning because I sleep from 11 to 7. And so uh, it, it always, and it just shuts off. Put it on a timer. Put all your stuff on a timer that doesn't need to be on. This is very important. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, Lisa of Light says, it's easier to be fearless when we understand our power. Yes, I like this. I like this. Absolutely. When we understand our power, <laughs> then it's game over because you know yourself as the source of all creation. Infinite, immortal, stainless, the mind of God, to use other language. Yes, Ursula says responsibility gives purpose. This is very true. Absolutely. Yeah, instead of just being passive, well, just, uh, I don't know, it's uh, out of my control. No, it's still in your control. You have to take control, though. You have to take control. So, uh, Pam says, giving power to evil when you focus on the negative. Yes, exactly. This is what we are talking about, definitely. And if you guys want to uh, read deeper into some of this kind of stuff that, that is like, I, I mean, over the years, so many books has, have come and gone for me. Um, definitely The Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes. Um, uh, I know I've said that a lot. There's some foundational ones, you know, Claude Bristol, The Magic of Believing. Definitely, these are all really good, the classic ones that talk essentially about this. VA Green says, societies and cultures have been coming and going for tens of thousands of years. Ours will too. Just know that and be prepared. Absolutely. Absolutely, guys. There is only one thing that we can say for absolute certain about human societies, and that is they don't last. Um, but at the same time, uh, we are practicing resilience. We are practicing resilience. So we're doing the cold training, physical and spiritual resilience. We're doing the sauna therapy, physical and spiritual resilience. We're doing the breath work, uh, resilience, health. Yes, number one prep, the number one prep for whatever might come is health. Mental, physical, emotional, spiritual health. This is so important and this is where most people are lacking I, mean, I know a lot of preppers that are in just awful health just awful health and they're riddled with worry and fear and all of this stuff oh man you gotta let that stuff go you know be prepared yes but you gotta focus on the health because without that you are not um you're not useful to yourself or to anyone so when we practice resilience training we can um we know that we can adjust, adapt, and thrive. Whatever, whatever comes, okay? If there's societal collapse, like, like in that situation on uh, that, that movie, uh, uh, Leave It All Behind, you know, those people are absolutely helpless. None of them have any idea what is going on. None of them, uh, and so th this is totally um, predictive programming, you know, implementing into the people's subconscious, you know, it's speaking, movies speak to the subconscious. This is how you respond. This is how you react. You just scream and go, ah, you know, just scream and you start crying and everybody's arguing and all of this stuff. Total disaster. That's not how you thrive. That's not how you overcome a situation. You got to take control. Okay. And you have to uh, become present and you have to look at all the options. You're not arguing. There's no kind of conflict. I mean, just all, there's so many aspects to it. And the television is programming into people how to be a moron, how to be the worst possible version of, of, of a person in that situation. Okay. Because it, it also wouldn't make for entertaining television if there was people like me that, that were fully adaptive. Okay. Okay. The grid's down. Not a problem. I know exactly what we do. Okay. Here's what we do. You know, um, Instead of just blah, 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 start arguing and fighting and crying and all of this, this stuff. Uh, but that's what people will do now. That's what people will do now because years and years of programming have gone into their mind, into their psyche. As soon as there's a little disaster, just scream and run around like your hair's on fire instead of taking control. So... Uh, Kathy says, I was... You'd... Lots of predictive programming in the series Game of Thrones. I don't watch TV. Oh, man. Predictive pro Definitely. Every scene, the Lannisters are drinking. Everybody's drinking all the time. Everybody's drinking, just constantly drinking, you know, and all sorts of, I mean, there's so much of it, guys. People think that, that the, the television is there, like, primarily as an entertainment for them. No, it is 100% 
uh, with a purpose, you know, financially, of course, but also um, much deeper than that, than finances. Yes. So Lisa of Light says, thank you, Nate, for your teachings and time. Yes, you are very welcome, my friend. I'm happy you're here. Uh, Val says, what was the film trying to tell people? Are they pushing fear? Uh, well, the film was trying to tell people, uh, well, the, the film was made, it, it, the executive producers was the Obamas, you know, so, so that's what a former president of the United States uh, and first lady, that, that is the message that they wanted to send to, to Americans, yeah, essentially. Um, the, the whole thing is just, you know, okay, so it's implanting the fear in people's mind of a cyber attack, a cyber attack and how awful it will be and everyone's just out of control. But they implant certain things that, that are very true, like the self-driving car. There's a scene in there with the self-driving cars, the Teslas, and another country essentially has hacked into the mainframe uh, of computers of America and has taken the self-driving cars right off the lot and essentially turning them into like missiles, boom, driving them into stuff, smash, you know, like that. Very possible, very possible. Self-driving Teslas, electric cars, all of that is coming. It, all, all of that is coming uh, in, in some way or the other. So um, they're implanting it in people's minds. So now people are, are, now that image is in their mind. And so collectively we can bring that about. That is how it works. That's why they have to do this. They have to implement that. Even though people say, oh, I don't want that to happen. It doesn't matter. That's not how the energy works. The energy just works. You focus on it, then boom, this is what comes. Uh, VA Green says, imagine the panic if they shut down the grid. Yeah, absolutely. And that is uh, definitely what the movie helps to cultivate. You know, just deep sense of panic you know, and, and conflict uh, um, amongst people, you know, of course, all, all the people are racist and stuff that, that are all part of it. You know, they're not working in cohesion. It's, a, it's just totally um, divisive and uh, uh, full of fear and full of um, uh, just creating a bunch of morons is essentially what it's doing, because that's not how you respond. That's not how you respond. Um, Jessica says, does Nate come on here live every morning? Yeah, no, just the past two mornings. Uh, but it's just Mondays here. Yeah, it's just Mondays. At some point, if, if we have like a bunch, I mean, if it's like really gaining momentum, I, I would come on, you know, every morning. But, uh, that, that's still some time. That's still some time away. So, uh, okay. Matias says, what about prediction of a property? protection of a property in a densely populated country like the Netherlands. That's right. That's right. What about it? Um, I don't know how the, I mean, you got to have protection in whatever way. Now in America, we have a very unique culture in the sense that we have a gun culture, you know, and we have for a long time. So the guns are all already out there. So, so it's a, a, any, any thought about, Oh, we should do away with them all. That ship sailed a long time ago because they're already all out there here in America. And so uh, you either use the technology and become proficient with it, or you um, are overpowered by the technology in that situation. So whatever the technology is in the Netherlands or whatever it is, you have to, get, you have to understand how to use it um, to your advantage. So, uh, you know, but we have basic things. Ha have have uh, a year supply of food. Watch the video on my other channel about how to make a 25 year food supply with the Mylar bags and the dried goods. Get you some five gallon buckets and get 40 pounds of dried beans, 40 pounds of rice, 40 pounds of a number of things. Put them with the oxygen absorbers. I show you how to do it in the video and then pound on the lid, you know, seal the bag, the Mylar bags. I got links in the description to all that stuff uh, in, my, in my Amazon store and then just put those away. Those are 25, 30 years that, that they can last because there's no oxygen, there's no light and it's cool relatively. Uh, and so that's like number one. So, okay, now you've got at least six months of food if something happened, you know, all right. Uh, now, what are you going to do about water? Get the rain barrel set up of some kind. You got to have some kind of rain barrel. You have to have water. So figure out your access to the water and how you're going to filter it. Get a Ber uh, Berkey water filter, a gravity fed ceramic water filter. Get one of those. So there's, there's many things, you know, but mostly the mental skills that is involved. Mental skills is very important. Um, 
Lisa of Light says, check out the crazy, funny, not funny movie, Idiocracy. It's a scary, funny take on the dumbing down of our society. Guys, Idiocracy, back when it was made, was funny because of how outlandish it is. But now, it is not, I, I watch it, I just watched it maybe last year or two years ago. And it's like, it's not actually funny anymore because it is happening. It, it is literally happening. It's just uh, because these people know, you know, the dumbing down, the systematic dumbing down uh, of, of the culture, of society. Um, Jerry says, if you have something people want, they will get it eventually as individuals are easy meat. Be spiritually tough enough to adapt and lead. Yes. Very good, guys. Very good right there. Uh, and also, you know, you hide in plain sight. So uh, you look at someone's house and, and you would think, oh, well, there's not going to be much there. Let's just move on. You know, okay, that's, that's what you want to be. You don't want to be a big target. You know, um, there's all kinds of stuff we, we could talk about, you know, in terms of that. Maybe we should have a prepping one. I mean, kind of. Maybe we should have a prepping talk sometimes just to make sure, just to touch base with everyone, see to what level of, of preparedness, you know, uh, not in a fear mongering kind of way, but in a realistic kind of way. You know, do you have food and water? and protection and to what level do you have that you don't have to go crazy but you got to have something don't be living like so many people do and meal to meal i got to go to the store because i don't have anything in the house what what uh the grid is too fragile for all of that whoa trish says i witnessed the 9 11 attacks when i worked two blocks away from the world trade center and also was stuck in brooklyn on the way home from work when the grid went out in 2003 people really did come together to help nice nice that's good to hear that's good to hear definitely val says people do not realize how much water they need daily oh way more water or food people don't realize definitely uh tris says i'm hopeful that people would do the same for future disasters that are being orchestrated yes ultimately yes I mean, it's still humanity. There's still humanity. But uh, since the World Trade Centers, we've had 20 years of hardcore programming happening. You know, so we, we can see kind of just from the pandemic how uh, everyone lost their mind, lost their mind during the pandemic. Except me, of course, I didn't. Um, Lisa of Light, prepare and plan in silence. Yes, that's right. Hush, hush. Yes. Um, Jessica says, love our royal Berkey. It's the best. Feels so safe and it tastes so good. Yes. She's talking about the uh, Berkey gravity fed water filter. Uh, now those for a good size one can be 500 bucks for the five gallon. Um, but I also have a link in the description to an, another good one, the water drop, which is a, a good company um, that makes something similar for like 170 you know, so I would get one of those guys. It's in my Amazon storefront. Get one and just tuck it away, even if you don't need it right now, because you can filter rainwater from it. You can you can catch you can take the water from your gutters and filter it through that and drink it perfectly fine. Um, ooh, Jerry, yeah, the Master Cleanse is a great teacher about how to do without food. Yeah, guys, uh, and Jessica. So if you guys. So that's a very good uh, benefit of the master cleanse is learning how to go extended periods of time without actual food. The cleanse isn't a fast technically because you are getting calories still uh, and the brain can still function perfectly fine. But uh, it definitely not eating anything for several days, for a week, it, it's mind blowing. The first time I did it, I thought, surely this is a joke. There's no way I could go more than a day or two without eating. But then I proved to myself, I was like, wow. So then in, in when life came about uh, and I was traveling or something and there was extended periods of time when I couldn't eat or in the mountains and stuff, when stuff got real crazy, couldn't eat, uh, then it was like, okay, well, I, I know that I can go as long as I need to without food. Uh, Ursula says, maybe your next book, Nate, a pamphlet on basics. Ooh, that would be good. That would be good. Definitely. Uh, it, it, and it would be more like a pamphlet. It's not even, it doesn't even have to be that deep. It just has to be, uh, but it has to predicate. Everything comes from the practices and, and from the, the mental, emotional energy field that, that is around you and that you create, that you emanate. This is very important. 
It has to be secure. It has to be uh, steadfast and strong. Lisa of Light says, yes, they ran for the toilet paper. Wow. Oh, I know. I know. Think about, think about, man, when that was happening, I was like, there's some guys somewhere having a good hearty laugh. There's some guys saying, hey, hey, tell them to stock up on toilet paper. They're just laughing. To, hey, hey, make them make a pandemic where they all rush to get toilet paper. <laughs> They're just laughing about it because of how totally absurd it is. That displayed to me how deeply disconnected people are from what is required for survival. They rush to the store to get toilet paper. And so, <laughs> I mean, it just defies comprehension instead of things that actually, during the pandemic, everything was sold out immediately, except for the rice and the beans and the dried, I mean, the stuff that you actually needed. It was just crazy. Boxes of Twinkies and boxes, you know, because I rushed to Costco as well, because I was like, whoa, I, I don't know what was going on, you know, uh, and I, I rushed to some, some stores, you know, and uh, I was seeing what people were coming away with, and I was just really saddened that people are that disconnected from their own survival, you know. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, Muddy Paul says, my sense of security goes up with every daily preparation for self-sufficiency. This is very true. The more you, you, the more you prove to yourself that you're capable, the more capable that you are, the less fear you have because you know, you just know that you can take whatever comes, whatever comes. I mean, even if it's just catastrophic, you, sucks, but you can take it. You can adjust, adapt, and thrive. So the uh, uh, Brian says, a water filter is easy to make. Yes, it can be made, definitely. Uh, VA Green says, life straws are excellent too in emergency situation. Yes, the life straws can be good in a total emergency, like if you have to go on foot somewhere. Um, yeah, Stephanie Van Fleet says, I watched a video on a home, of a homestead fil uh, water filter using buckets, sand, rocks, and activated charcoal used in Africa. I was wondering if this was actually effective and boiling the water after. Yes, definitely. That, that is effective. That's how most filters are, many filters are made. Uh, but yes, this is, uh, there's all different kinds of ways that we can use. So if you have all those supplies, you know, activated charcoal and sand and rocks and buckets and all of that, yes, you, you can definitely make that. Um, the Berkey or the water drop, you know, is very convenient. It's stainless steel. So you can get it and you can get two, you can get a couple extra things of filters. Uh, and these are ceramic filters. And so the pores are so tiny that only the water comes through. Uh, and that is, they've been using those for thousands of years, actually, to purify water. I've been in many villages, uh, where they have like a big clay, a huge clay vessel that's shaped down like this to a point, uh, with another that's it's suspended several feet over another uh, vessel and the water just drips through the clay vessel into this vessel. Uh, and that is one way that they purify their water. I've seen this. Um, so, okay, guys, I think this is about good for this session. What do you think? Any burning questions about anything? So I hope that you understand uh, more about predictive programming and why it's so important to be aware of it and why it's happening. It's not so much, in my opinion, uh, it's not so much pe people are like, they just want to toy with us. They just want to, like a game of cat and mouse. They just want to show us what they're going to do and then do it. Eh, yeah, I, I think that that's a little bit of projecting onto the situation. Uh, and that could be part of it, maybe. But uh, uh, the people really pulling the strings are, are not even getting off on that. It's, it's totally different. It's totally different. And so they, they, are, they are making uh, these things into the subconscious mind so that you all will help bring it about. Because without the collective consciousness decoding it, it can't come about. So um, that is why it's so important. And now some people will say uh, also that in their satanic sort of, uh, they call it satanic sort of cults and rituals and stuff, that they have to show the people what's going to happen to them so it absolves them of the energetic karma of the karmic energy that comes from uh, behind that comes with the action. Now this could be true on a level, but even at the highest levels, guys, 
and some of you may come to find this, even at the highest levels, there is no karma. At the highest levels, there is none because there is only the one source of all creation. This is why we don't fear anything. There's what appears to be maybe negative, but ultimately it's all still part of the one source, the one light. It doesn't even matter. It's totally irrelevant in the ultimate, on the highest levels. So, yes, Jessica, good on you, my friend. Same here. Uh, Blue Wolf says, thanks, Nate, uh, and chat blessings to you all. Thanks, Nate, and chat. Blessings to you all from rainy Mount Shasta. Oh, man. Oh, I love the, the Pacific uh, Coast. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, guys, if you haven't already, give it a thumbs up. Yes. And, uh, um, oh, this is another, speaking of water purification, I wanted to show you. I got this um, uh, shower, this uh, water filter for the shower. And uh, I'll put a link in the Amazon storefront. But this thing is amazing. It's big, but it... Uh, you can totally sense it now in the way that it doesn't dry the skin out. It doesn't dry the hair out. It doesn't, it, you can tell it removes, uh, the chlorine. It removes a lot of the other stuff, you know, hundred percent of, uh, of iron, hundred percent of, uh, you know, these other things, a lot of bacterias and stuff like that, copper, but mostly the chlorine is what we are trying to remove. Uh, so this I can say is a very good one. I'm very happy with it so far. I'll put a link in the description or in the Amazon storefront. Kathy Tittle, 20 bucks. Thank you very much, my friend. Says, uh, thanks again, Nate. Merry Christmas. Yes, Merry Christmas, guys, because uh, we won't. Let's see. What is the when is Christmas is Monday, right? Yeah, we won't be. Um, uh, let me check real quick. Is Christmas Monday? So. Yeah, OK, so we will not be coming to you from Christmas because, you know, my family does Christmas and stuff. So we will not be coming to you on Christmas uh, morning. So Merry Christmas to everybody, of course. Yes. And we will begin the new year uh, free of fear and full of health and vitality because we're consciously making this happen. Not because it acts, we accidentally just get healthy, but because we're intentionally making all of this happen. Yes. So uh, the new year is a great time to do the master cleanse, to just reset everything, uh, start the cold training, start the sauna therapy while it's still cold. Get all this in your life. Do it consistently, guys. This is important to do it consistently. That's when the magic happens. So um, Ursula says for the outdoor shower, there is no outdoor shower. We're not doing that. Okay. Uh, so Val says, thank you, Nate and tribe. Merry Christmas to you all. Yes. Lisa of light says you are not the body. We are not even the mind. That's exactly correct. My friend, we are none of that. We are nothing that can be formed and therefore unformed. Yes. All right, guys. Infinite spirit goes before me and opens the way. Infinite wisdom tells me what to do and what to say. Infinite spirit goes before me and opens the way. Infinite wisdom tells me what to do and what to say. Infinite spirit goes before me and opens the way. Infinite wisdom tells me what to do and what to say. <laughs> 